I'm going to help you to monetize on your natural gifts and talents. So I want you to prepare for an exercise that we're going to do together. I'm going to do a hypnosis exercise with you to go back to where your abundance blockages were created. Hypnosis is not really about being asleep. It's actually about waking up to your true potential, waking up to the fact that you were put here with a unique skill that you can monetize better than anyone else. That's why you're here in the whole history of creation. There has never been anyone exactly like you. So you're not actually falling asleep. You're actually beginning to wake up. Hypnosis is all about accepting suggestions. I want to show you that you're deeply, powerfully suggestible. And if you haven't gotten what you want, it's because you're deeply suggestible. You've been told by other people how you should think. You've been thinking, I can't get that money. I can't get that promotion. I don't know how to sell my products. I don't feel comfortable speaking in front of public. I'm never going to make more money than now. And you know what? You're right. I'm going to show you how incredibly powerfully suggestible you you are. So I want you to just look up, keep your eyeballs up, and then just close your eyelids down. If you can do that, you really can't stop yourself going into hypnosis because you're going into a REM state, an alpha brainwave state, the state you are in when you are asleep. And then you're going to go into theta state that really is accepting suggestions. Now, some of you may say that I don't want to go into hypnosis. That's fine. You can just see it one time and then try again and actually go into the state. I can't actually make you do anything you don't really want to do in hypnosis. Instead, I'm going to help you to accomplish what you want. More abundance, more wealth. So don't worry. No one's going to come out of this exercise, you know, barking like a dog or something silly. So look up as high as you can backwards. Keep your eyeballs up, up, up as if you're pointing to your third eye with your eyes and simply breathe in and breathe out. Take another deep breath, breathe in. And now every time you breathe, you feel a deep, deep, powerful relaxation. Breathe out. And one final time, breathe in. Keep your eyeballs up. The more you blink, the deeper and faster you are going into hypnosis. Keeping your eyeballs up as you exhale, just begin to close your eyelids right down. Now your eyelids are completely shut down. The muscles and the nerves around your eyes are becoming heavy, droopy, drowsy. Now just drop your jaw, open your mouth, and just feel that relaxation. And tilt your head just a little downwards. And it's as if you're looking down a flight of stairs. You're at the top of step 10, at the top of the staircase. And as I count, you're going to see your feet, hear your feet, 
treading down each step. Right now you are moving at the edge of step 10. As each muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose, and you go deeper down into step nine and going on to step eight. And you're going more and more relaxed as you step into step seven, going deeper with every number I count. You're taking step six. Every sound and noise and movement around you is carrying you deeper, further, deeper into step five. And you see your feet on step five and you feel so relaxed. Step four, as each muscle, every nerve turns loose let's loose and relax you're going on to step three going deeper deeper you're taking step two going deeper enjoy feeling this deep relaxation you're on to step one just go deeper 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 into relaxation I want you to stretch your hands in front of you as if you're holding on to the handlebars of a bike or like the holding the reins of a horse. Close your hands together. Your hands are about six inches apart. And I want you to imagine that in your left hand, you're holding an enormous red fire bucket that weighs about 100 kilos it's so heavy a heavy bucket of heavy cement you're just being pulled down your left hand is becoming heavier and heavier you can feel the weight of that bucket in your wrist in your finger in your knuckles and that it's kind of painful, but you can manage it. You're just being pulled by this heavy bucket full of cement. And as you're being pulled by your left arm down, your whole body is so heavy, it is sinking right down into the chair. Your eyes are heavy, but your right hand is attached to a pulley like a rope and you have an enormous helium filled balloon that is just pulling you upwards it is so light and floating you feel pulled upwards by your right arm it's just wanting to pull you off the ground. So while your right arm is pulling up, your left arm is pulling you down. Isn't that interesting? One arm is pulling up, floating up, and the other is floating down. Why is that? It's weightless, and the other one is traveling way down. That's because you are powerfully, beautifully suggestible. So much so that try to push your right arm down and it's really like trying to push a balloon underwater. It's just difficult. It just keeps pulling you up. The more you try to push it down, it springs up like a ball in the water. It just bounces up. And so it's the same with your left hand. It's pulled down, pulled completely down, and it can't go up. It just can't go up. Now, as I count to three, I want you to let go of the bucket from your left arm. I want you to let go of the balloon and your hands are free. 
I'm going to count backwards now and I'm going to recite like a movie of your life and you're going to go backwards into your life. This movie is going to travel you back, back into time and all of a sudden you're going to be at a scene, a place, an event where you got these money blocks. Even if you go back to these scenes of abject poverty or pain, you're not actually going to relive the scene. You're just going to be reviewing it. I mean, think about it. If I ask you to go back to your best orgasm, you can only go back and think about it, right? You can't actually relive the orgasm. Just I, if I ask you to go back to it and visit it. So if someone happened to hit you and I say, remember when that person hit you, um, don't worry, you're not going to feel the pain. You're just going to be observing some scenes. It's, it's about reviewing, not reliving your childhood. On the count of five, you are drifting back to your teen years, 14, 15, 16, to a vivid, vital, crucial, significant scene, one of the, the roots root of how, where, why, and when you have money blocks, wealth blocks, financial blocks. On account of four, you are becoming younger, smaller, lighter, shorter. On the count of three, years, months, weeks, days are peeling away from your body as you drift right back to a vivid, vital, crucial scene that is the cause, the reason, the root of any and every money block. You're going backwards, 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 rewinding, rewinding, and be there. And stop in the exact scene in your teen years that has impacted you your entire life. And as I ask these questions, you immediately, intuitively know the answers. It's rather like you just switched on a laptop computer. The picture is warming up and coming into focus and you are right in the middle of this scene. This scene in your mind where you are right now. Is it daytime or is it nighttime? Are you inside or are you outside? Are you on your own or is anybody there with you? How old are you about? And here is the only question that matters. What are you doing, seeing, feeling, and experiencing in that scene? As I click my fingers, you can feel what you felt back then. You can see exactly what you saw then. And as I count to three, your ears are wide open and you can hear exactly what you heard then about money or the lack of it or the shame of it or the embarrassment or the inability to even find it. Here it comes on the count of one, two, and three. Your ears are wide open. I want you to hear exactly what you heard. What is being said about money? over you. Maybe it's a discussion between your parents. Maybe it has your parents talking to you about money. What are you hearing about money? And who is it that's talking about this stuff about money? Sometimes it's parents fighting about money, crying about money, and refusing to give you money 
stay in that scene. Perhaps you wanted to buy something and your parent didn't want to buy it for you. I want you to look around that scene. Look over, look around, look through that scene from various perspectives. And when you've looked at that scene, I want you to go, hey, yeah, look at that. I'm suddenly understanding where I got these beliefs that there's not enough or that I can't attract money or that other people will have more. Those are those rich people. Or if I have more that I have to be embarrassed by it. This is your aha moment. It's a light bulb moment where you're like, Oh my God, that's where I got some beliefs about money that are limiting me. So I want you to keep that scene and just put it to one side. Just put it in the corner. And now we're going to go to another scene, a vivid, vital, crucial, deeply significant scene that is why you ever got this confusing, dysfunctional belief and relationship with money. On the count of five, you are back in that movie, rewinding, rewinding, go backwards, backwards. You are becoming younger, smaller, lighter, shorter, your years are going back, months, weeks, days are peeling away from your body as you go right back right now to a vivid scene in your early adolescence, a scene where you are in a very sensitized scene because this scene has impacted you your whole life. Here it comes, be there. It's just like you switched on a television set and a picture is warming up and there you are right in the middle of that picture. Feel what you felt then, see what you saw then. Is it daytime or nighttime? Are you inside or outside? Are you on your own or is someone there with you? How old are you about? And the only question that matters, by the way, is what are you seeing? What are you experiencing, feeling some disappointment about money? You can feel what you felt then, that there wasn't enough money or just open your ears open wide and you can hear something you heard all about money on the count of one, two, and three, just be there. Stay in that scene, hear what you heard. Somebody saying something right in your line of hearing. You can hear something about money that's impacted you your entire life. Again, this is a light bulb moment, an illuminating moment. Oh my God, oh wow, of course I've had limiting beliefs of money. That's why I never asked for money. That's why I've denied myself, deprived myself, held myself back, felt uncomfortable with money, that I should never talk about money, discuss it, ask for it, kept myself small. Stay in that scene. I want you to look over that scene, to look around, to look through it like as if you're watching a movie of your life. But today, you get to change the ending of the movie to make the ending what it should have been. Look over and around and right through that scene. 
understand it, what's going on, other people's beliefs, other people's actions. So we're going to do this just one more time. This time you can go back to, in your childhood, a powerful scene where you really learned these confusing, contradicting beliefs about money and success too. So on the count of five, one more time, this movie is going backwards, 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 playing backwards, taking you back, even further back as you go to a vivid, vital, crucial, significant scene as to why you have these blocks towards money and success. Travel back in time, years, months, weeks, days, are peeling away from your body. You are drifting right back, right back, right now. Just be there now. As I click my fingers, the screen is on, it's warming up, and there it is, a scene, and you are right in the middle of that scene. And in this scene where you are, which location is it, day or night? Are you inside or outside? Are you on your own or with someone else, with people you know? How old are you? And here's the only question that matters. What are you doing, seeing, feeling, experiencing, feel? Feel that feeling of lack, of fear, of anxiety. You can see the entire experience that you went through with your younger mind that could really not analyze everything logically. You were more emotionally. You believed everything that you lived. You played the only part you ever known. And then you made it your own without even knowing what you were doing. You took on these beliefs. And on the count of one, two, and three, your ears are wide open. Here comes something you heard. Someone said something and you heard it about money, perhaps it was your peer group, your friends, your parents, one, two, and three, you are there. Hear what you heard then. Who said it? Look over, look around, look through that scene and pick that scene and unravel that scene. Make sense of that scene. See yourself getting influenced and how it impacted you, how it affected you, what it did to you. All the beliefs you picked up, the limiting beliefs. And now I want you to imagine that you have all three scenes in your hands, like you're holding three playing cards, you're holding three movies, and you're able to say to yourself, okay, in my hand I'm holding these three different scenes about money. Okay, just put your palms up in both hands. You're looking at your right hands at those three scenes, and in your left hand, there's a scene of you today with a money block, a career block, a limiting belief, something that's held you back. How did these three scenes that I just looked at cause this scene today? Subconscious mind, brilliant mind, tell me, show me, explain to me, how did these scenes then leave me to be feeling poor and with scarcity today. And here it comes, it's just starting to make sense. Of course, my parents were victims. My surroundings told me their stuff. Don't talk about money, it's not polite. Never mention money, don't ask, don't be greedy. Only greedy people are rich. Rich people are bad. Don't show off, 
Don't draw attention to yourself. Don't ask. We can't afford that. Don't ask me for things I cannot buy. Don't make me feel bad as your parent for stuff I can't buy you. It's going to make me resent you. Don't do well, because what about your sister? What about your brother? How will they feel if you stand out and shine and be a star? And teachers too. Maybe there was a teacher who put you down for being too smart, too clever. She would maybe say, you're never going to make it. Tone it down. Curb your enthusiasm. And I want you to go back to the first scene that you saw. And I want you to justify to me why it's not true. You see, we play back this old movie. I don't know how to ask for money. I'm not good at selling. I feel so bad at discussing money. I hide my money, pretend I have less so that other people don't get jealous, or I pretend I have more. I never was allowed to have money. You know how much that costs? My parents or my grandparents, they said, don't talk about money. It's the root of evil. So I want you to go back to that first scene and I want you to say out loud, that's not me. Repeat after me on the count of one, two, and three. That's not me. That kid in that scene is not me and will never be me and will never be me ever again. And repeat after me for the rest of my long, wealthy life. For the rest of my long, wealthy life because I want to hear the ending. So I'm going to repeat this. This is like Chinese whispers. I'm going to say something and you're going to put on an ending. You're going to say it with passion and conviction. All right? Don't analyze it too much. If you keep repeating these new affirmations, do you know that your brain will be rewired and reprogrammed? If you say positive stuff, you can make positive neural connections and the negative ones are going to subside. So repeat after me, you're going to finish the sentence. That's not me. That cannot be me will not be me ever again for the rest of my long, wealthy life because, and I need to hear the ending. I want you to shout it out, say it out loud, stay in the first scene. That will not be me ever, ever, ever again, never, ever, ever again, that cannot be me because. Stay in the first scene. That will not be me. That cannot be me because. If you can really do the it's not me, you are shattering, smashing, eradicating, breaking those old beliefs. That's what's going to happen. So scene two, I want you to say out loud, that's not me, will not be me ever again for the rest of my long abundant life because shout it out scream it out as you got older what scared you as a kid is irrelevant and these beliefs are irrelevant too so this time i want to hear some conviction some energy some volume in your voice Scene two, that's not me, that will never ever be me, ever again, 
for the rest of my abundant life because that's more like it. That's good neuroplasticity. It works. So let's go back to scene three. The scene where you may have gone back to the earliest memory to do with wealth, success, abundance, being limited, being held back by a belief. And I want you to say one last time, but with real energy, that's not me. That can never be me ever again. For the rest of my long, abundant life, because, and the very last time, that's not me. It will never ever be me for the rest of my wealthy life because. I want you to put your arms around yourself like you're holding yourself. I want you to hold a little child who's grown up in a house with um, some extraordinary confusing beliefs, really confusing beliefs. You know, when I was young, my father was a communist and uh, I could never have a, a, a Barbie doll or something I wanted. He was like, that's for consumers. And it just made me feel bad. It, it's like I upset him every time I wanted something. And so that affected me for a very long time. I'm not worth it. I'm different. I'm somehow flawed. Um, to get what I want, I'm going to upset daddy or I'm going to upset someone else or it's not good. But if you look at my lifestyle right now, I don't have anything to do with that younger, fear-based child. So I want you to take that little child or the young adolescent, and I want you to just take them in your arms, and I want you to repeat some words, even if they feel silly. I'm becoming a loving parent to you. You live in my world now. This is a better, safer, nicer place. I love you. I admire you. I see how gifted you are. I see your skills and your talents. I'll always have so much time for you. You and I have balance now. I'm becoming a loving parent to you. And no one in the world can play this role better than me. I know what you need to hear. I know what you need to feel. I love you. You're worth everything. You are so worthy, so deserving, so talented, so gifted, so skilled. And you live in my world now. And I'm upgrading you into my world now. And as I upgrade you into my world, you can never go back. Not even in your daydreams. And I want you to imagine taking that child into your living space or beautiful places that you go and just show her or him around things that you didn't have access to as a child. 
Say, look at all this stuff that I have. Look at all these beautiful experiences that I've created, the trips we've been on. You're not wearing secondhand clothes anymore or having to think about your lunch money, going to school, hating the lunch you have, that other kids have more stuff. That's not you anymore. You're in a completely different reality. Go into your beautiful house and open the fridge and say, you get to choose what to eat. You get to choose what to believe. I want you to tell that little kid how your world is different now, that you're in charge. Look at this, I'm driving a car. I'm clearly not 15 or 10 because I'm driving my own car. I have a credit card. I am empowered. I can create a business. I'm running a business. Whatever it is, show this child or adolescent how you've created a good life for yourself on all levels. It's not only a fancy car, but look, I have my friends, people who support me, people who are interested in me and what I do. You know, when you were a little kid, wouldn't you have liked to have someone say, you are so smart. Wouldn't it be nice someone to tell you, gosh, you're good at creating. How good you are at drawing, at speaking, at presenting yourself. When you grow up, you can monetize on these talents of yours because the universe gave you that and it will support you. It wants you to monetize. Wouldn't it have been nice to hear these things when you were a little kid before you went to sleep? or early in the morning, first thing. You are so talented. Do you think that the universe gave you those talents so that you can become a bricklayer? I don't think so. So I want you to say to that little kid or that young adolescent, you can do it in your head or out loud. You are smart. You have a gift and you can monetize that gift. That's why you have the gift. That's why you have your looks, your ability to connect, your grade in math or whatever your talent is. The universe gave you a gift, a talent to share it with the world. Share that gift, shine, dazzle, be amazing. I put you here to be amazing. You may have come through some parents who had issues, but you came through them, not from them. The universe created you and it put you here and it gave you something. And your job is to share that with the world and go deeply and understand that everything you want without exception is because of what and how it makes you feel. You, you want the iPhone 14 because it makes you feel better. You don't really need that phone or that sports car. Whatever you want is because it's how it's gonna make you feel. Just think to yourself, I have something to make the world better and I'm gonna offer that thing, that product or service to the world. So just let yourself go deeper as you go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper. As you go deeper, you're remembering that little baby who was born with 24 hour room service, i.e. your parents, all the needs were met. You really felt that you could do anything when you, tried to walk, you cracked it. When you tried to eat your own food, you cracked it. You did it. You learned all the time. You were born wired and coded to make it. And you are still wired and coded to make it. You are erasing, eradicating, shattering, and smashing these old beliefs. Even the church bells are ringing. And let's replace now with our new beliefs, 
say to yourself, I have something to offer the world. I am here to make a difference. I matter. I have something to offer the world. I am here to make a difference. I matter. I've got something to say, something to do, something to achieve, and I can do that better than anyone else. I've got something to say, something to do, something to achieve, and I can do that better than anyone else. You have your own skill set, so there is something you can do. There is something you can do, offer, achieve, share. Because the universe put you here for a reason. It gave you something for a reason. You see, if we were all good at everything, that would be a very unfair and boring world. You're supposed to be a master at something. You see, in the whole universe of creation, no one is as unique as you. You only have to be good at one thing. You have to recognize what you're good at. I say, this is my gift. This is what I'm good at. This is my area of expertise and excellence. Everyone has one, including you. So as you go deeper, drift deeper, you remember, I accept praise. I accept compliments. I fill myself up with praise. I fill myself up with compliments. I nourish my soul and say to myself, good things, praise and compliments. I am receiving. I am so grateful to be receiving. I am so happy and grateful to be receiving every day small miracles, just appreciating everything. And that's just the beginning because now you're ready to receive. You're ready to receive much more in terms of quality and quantity and money. I am going to accept that people will invest in me just tell yourself that. I am ready for people to invest in me because you are worth investing in. And every day, understanding is this power as you understand how, where, when, and why you pick up those old limiting beliefs. You now understand it's not you anymore. There is such a distance. That was a little child. All right? You are you. You're a fully fledged adult and you don't need these limiting beliefs anymore. Let go. Remind yourself of how you live in a world full of possibilities. There has never been been a better time to monetize your skills, to monetize your gifts, to monetize your talents, to monetize you. The internet, AI, these can all help you bring out your talent even more and multiply it. Don't sell your time for money. Multiply, create products and services that can multiply your reach and every day you're about to learn more and find out more and how to monetize it because you're a constant learner. You are learning all the time about how to multiply and leverage your income. Just remind yourself, I matter, I'm significant, I matter. When you know you're enough, you find that peace within. You just find everything around you wonderful. You appreciate, even when you're paying your bills, you appreciate, look at that, I'm able to pay my bills. Thank you, thank you universe. Just keep being grateful for every single thing, even the things that seem negative are pushing you along your way because you are worth it. So I want you to say, I'm worth it. 
I'm worth it. I'm so worth it. I couldn't be more worth it. I'm worth everything. I'm worth investment. I'm worth praise. I'm worth good business partners. I'm worth recognition and appreciation. I'm worth abundance and wealth and love and joy and success and orgasms. It's all available to me. I deserve pleasure. I live it. I love it. I appreciate my life. It's the truth about me. That's how I work. That's how I function. And as you remind yourself that every day, that's exactly what is going to be coming because you're aligning yourself with the telos, the end goal, the outcome. Just remind yourself today, you are gifted, you are extraordinary. The universe gave you a skill that it didn't give anyone else. This combination of talents brings out that one fabulous you. You do need to practice praise and appreciation to yourself because this way you align yourself with that outer outcome that you want. Just build that receiving muscle. Expect great things to happen. Expect great people to be sent to you. People who complement your needs and talents. Expect success and now you can never go back. Never go back to that self-pitying, self-sabotaging person you've been in the past. Just keep telling yourself, listen to my guided meditations, listen to my hypnosis, do my online course, keep doing it onwards and upwards, and even share it with other people. Make a study group of this beautiful group so that this love and this power can expand and remind yourself every day, every day, just remind yourself how wonderful you are. See yourself receiving the outcome. How will you feel? What's that amazing feeling you're going to have when you have that outcome you want? You're going to feel great. You're going to feel in deep appreciation and gratitude. So now let's just take a deep, deep breath and just appreciate yourself for being here now that you have offered yourself this reminding experience because that's all I've done. I've reminded you of your true beauty, of your excellence and your ability to achieve anything you set your mind to.